What is up everybody back with a new video here today. Uh, it's been a little while. I went to Maryland Death Fest a couple of weeks ago. Got sick while I was there so my voice was messed up a little while but we're back. We're good. Uh, I'm gonna give you all my 10 favorite uh, bands that have siblings in the band. Um, you know just my favorites as usual. Uh, there is one specific band that some people might be asking about that I'll give in the honorable mentions. They're not gonna make my list because it has two very famous brothers but um, they weren't in the band together for a very long time and the material that they were on just isn't good enough and it's not enough to get in my top 10. I'll get more into that later. Uh, some of you may know who I'm talking about just by that little description, but my number 10 is gonna be Obituary. Great classic death metal formed in 1984 in Tampa, Florida. Out of that great uh, Florida death metal scene, a lot of awesome bands, of course. Uh, John Tardy on vocals has a super cool, unique voice. And Donald Tardy, a really solid drummer. Seen these guys uh, live three times now, most recently at uh, Maryland Death Fest, which, great show. Um, you know, they were supposed to play the main big lot, but there was some rain and storms around, so they moved them over to actually a lot nicer of an area in Baltimore, which, I mean, it's only like a couple blocks away, but better area, honestly, a little bit cooler of a spot as well. They killed it. They've got 10 albums, um, of course, Slowly We Rot and uh, Cause of Death, my favorites. Um, also have The End Complete on cons uh, cassette tape right here. Good classic album from 92. Um, had a couple more of their albums sitting around here. Uh, they're self-titled from 2017, which is their most recent as of now. And Frozen in Time from 2005, which uh, this opens with Redneck Stomp, which is what they open with at every concert as far as I know. It's been that way every time I've seen them. You know, I think they should probably change that up a little bit. I don't know if people like that. I mean, I'm sure everybody likes it, but I'd I'd switch it up. Um, but cool band regardless. Great classic death metal obituary. My number 10 band here. Um, number nine, I'm going to go with a bit more of a obscure, slightly obscure band, uh, Eidolon from Canada. This is the band of the Drover brothers, Sean and Glenn. Sean, great uh, drummer. Of course, they were both in Megadeth and Glenn, um, great guitar player. Uh, the only album they were together on in Megadeth was United Abominations. Um, so I guess technically Megadeth could qualify for this list, but they're not going to make it. Um, but Eidolon, great band. They've got seven albums. My favorite being Nightmare World. It is good, a good mix of like speed and thrash and some like US power metal type of stuff. It's not really European power metal style to me. It's more of like Sabotage, Liege Lord uh, type power metal, which is really cool. Super underrated band. They had the seven albums between 96 and 2006. Weren't together for a super long time, but uh, pretty good amount of albums there. Very underrated, so go check them out. If, if you like Megadeth, I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't like Eidolon. Uh, number eight, I'm going to jump over to Finland and uh, Eidolon from Canada. Uh, Finland here with Archgoat at number eight. Very heavy uh, black metal, some elements of death metal there as well. The brothers, I've, I've got this written down because um, they got their stage names here. We got Lord Angel Slayer on bass and vocals and Ritual Butcherer on guitar. These guys are actually twin brothers, which is pretty cool. Uh, the real names are Rainer and Kai. And their last name, uh, Paula Kanaho, or Paula Kanaho, probably butchered that, but really cool band. They've only got five albums. Originally, they were together from 89 to 93. Broke up for a while, got back together in 2004. I've put out five albums since. Uh, favorite album, probably The Luciferian Crown from 2018. Uh, awesome stuff, very heavy. The vocals kind of like lower, very guttural, pretty low, but I think it's really cool stuff if you like extreme heavy stuff. Uh, you should like Arch Goat. They're my number eight here. Uh, number seven, I'm going to go with ACDC. You know, this is hard rock and metal we're uh, qualifying here. And ACDC, good, classic, safe pick. Malcolm and Angus, uh, very influential band. People, people bitch about them sometimes, saying their stuff sounds the same, but... Uh, whatever, dude. They got good classic, classic hard rock that's super influential to me. I love Let There Be Rock, and uh, probably uh, Back in Black are my favorite albums. But Powerage is great. Um, Flick of the Switch I think is really cool and underrated. Badlands is a freaking amazing song. Uh, but yeah, Hell's Bells is probably my favorite song by them, which is really, really mainstream, pretty popular. But it's pretty sick. Got a great opening. Opens Back in Black. Uh, Malcolm and Angus. Great guitar players. Malcolm passed away a couple years back, so RIP to him. Uh, Angus, really cool lead guitar player. 
but a uh, great band, ACDC number seven. And my number six, I'm gonna go uh, to Sweden here with Enforcer, amazing band, love these guys, part of the new wave of traditional heavy metal, basically a wave of bands that are going for that classic 80s you know, sound and look. Um, originally it was started by Olaf Wickstrand, who is the front man leader of the band. He does vocals and guitar. Uh, he started it in 2004 as a one-man project, and then some other guys joined the band a couple of years later, including his brother, um, Jonas Wickstrand, on the drums, and uh, they've both been on every single album, which is only five albums, but Diamonds, um, Death by Fire, and From Beyond are all amazing. If you like classic 80s metal, you know, basically it's like a mix of like Motorhead, Dokken, uh, Iron Maiden, so... Just imagine those bands blended together, a uh, more modern take on it, but still with those classic elements of those bands. Amazing stuff. Enforcer, my number six right here. Um, number five, I'm going to go with Sepultura. Classic, classic band from Brazil. Of course, Igor and Max Cavalera. Um, now they were together in the band on the first six albums. Then Max, uh, the front man who did vocals on the first six albums and guitar, left the band. Uh, Igor stayed in a little while longer. I did just see these guys together in their band, which they had put together for Maryland Death Fest. Uh, I don't know what else they're doing with the band, but Cavalera is what they were going by. They did a classic set of freaking Beneath the Remains and Arise uh, material, which was amazing. The crowd went insane. Uh, Beneath the Remains is one of the best, uh, one of the best thrash albums of all time. Sank uh, could be said about Arise as well. Uh, also have Schizophrenia. I've got Arise on CD as well, but didn't grab it. Schizophrenia is great classic stuff as well, but uh, amazing, amazing band, Sepultura. Um, at number four, I'm going to go with Lord Belial. Great, great Swedish black metal. They're my favorite black metal band from Sweden. There's three brothers that uh, were in this band together originally, the Backland Brothers. Uh, we got, I got it written down here, the Backland Bros. We got Thomas, Mick, or Mickey, it's probably pronounced... Uh, and Anders, now they were all together on everything, like the first four or five albums, and then one of them was off the Seal of Belial in 2004, but then he came back. Uh, but Thomas is the only one that's been on every single album. He does vocals and guitar. Um, <clears throat> I believe Anders is not on their most recent album, which is freaking amazing. They just came back with an album, uh, just came out a couple of weeks ago. Really solid stuff, so check that out, but really really great classic black metal um you know kiss the goat uh, enter the moonlight gate um this album here on holy crusade and angel grinder their first four are mainly what i really love from them but you know entire discography is super solid there is nine albums now rapture is that most recent album that just came out uh, about a month ago or so and it's as i said uh, amazing so check that out and check out lord belial if you don't know them they're great um, my number three, we got Pantera here. Uh, really like Pantera. I don't listen to them quite as much as I used to, but still really respect them. I think they're a great band. Uh, Dimebag Daryl, of course, and Vinny Paul, the Abbott Bros. Uh, Vinny on drums and Dimebag on guitar, of course. Got a classic, really old album right here, Projects in the Jungle from 1984. This was their second album. Got a picture of the guys when they were all glammed up with the big hair. Uh, which I really like this era of the band. Those first uh, three with Terry Glaze are cool. And then Phil Anselmo came into the band for power metal. People just act like those don't exist for whatever stupid reason. I mean, Dime, who was going by the name Diamond Daryl at the time, he changed his name officially to Dimebag. The first time it was known as that uh, actually it was on Far Beyond Driven in the credits in 94, but uh, known as Diamond back in the 80s. All those albums, you know, he's shredding all over them. Uh, it's basically just like Rat and Van Halen and Kiss, like all blended together on the first three. So I don't really get the hate for it. Um, but then, of course, they got a lot heavier as time went on. Um, Cowboys from Hell is still one of my favorite albums of all time. Uh, and they're just a great, great band. So num my number three right there. And these two bands, number three and two, have switched around. Depends on the day, honestly. But my number two for now, I'm going to go with Sabotage, the Oliva Brothers. Um Amazing stuff. Chris on guitar, who tragically was killed in a car accident in 1993. Way too young, but uh, even though he was only 30 years old, still had seven albums with him. And of course, uh, John Oliva on the vocals. And he's also done a lot of other stuff in the band over the years. Um, some guitar, some drums, keyboards. 
great songwriter as well but those first seven albums are all freaking amazing and hall of the mountain king is one of the greatest metal albums of all time and my number one is it's a pretty obvious pick when you think of hard rock and classic metal bands with brothers or siblings got to be van halen uh alex eddie amazing stuff um i think this one objectively it's got to be number one. Uh, it just happens to be my be my personal favorite as well. Those first six albums are insane. Eddie Van Halen, probably the best guitar tone of all time. And Alex, I think, is a super great, uh, somewhat, I mean, everybody knows him. Everybody knows he's good, but he's kind of overshadowed slightly by the greatness of Eddie Van Halen. So sometimes people might overlook uh, Alex a bit, but he's a great drummer as well. They've got 12 albums. They were on all of them together. R.I.P. Eddie, terrible loss, of course, uh, as I said. I rank them in my top five guitar players of all time. Amazing. Van Halen, the number one band with siblings uh, for me. And a couple honorable mentions real quick. I've got Striper, Heart, which, uh, of course, Ann and Nancy Wilson. Got them here. Uh, Heart is cool. I th yeah, it's on the edge of classic rock and hard rock. I think they can be classified as hard rock. Lamb of God, which I've got one of their albums right here. Chris and Willie Adler. I'm not a, like... I like Lamb of God. I'm not like a massive fan, but uh, I think they're good enough for an honorable mention. And Scorpions was that band I was talking about at the beginning. Um, of course, you know, <clears throat> the uh, Shanker Bros, Rudolph, and Michael. Some people might have them on the list, but they were only together basically on like one and a half albums. The debut on some Crow. They both played on it on all the songs. And um, Love Drive, which Michael only did like half the songs. He came back to the band after he left UFO and was only on a couple of the songs. Um, of course, Matthias Jabs was there as well, doing lead on like half the songs and Rudolph as usual doing rhythm guitar. And then Michael left again and formed the Michael Schenker group. So uh, Scorpions for me are just getting the honorable mention because it's basically only an album and a half of material. But if they're good enough for you, let me know and let me know what you thought. Uh, who do you have in the top 10? Um, what'd you think about my list? And as usual, thank you guys for watching. Till next time.